Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. I got lot of requests from you guys to make a video on the EEPROM, and today I decided to finally make one. I will try to write the generalized code, so that most of the EEPROMs can use the functions, that I am going to use in this video. I am using a T24C 256 EEPROM, which works with I2C, and the code can work across all the STM32 devices. Let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE first. I am using STM32 F446RE controller. Give some name to the project and click finish. In the Cube MX, first of all I am using the external crystal for the clock. Now the only thing we need to do is enable the I2C. I am shifting these pins, for the ease of connection on my board. I am going to use the fast mode. Why did I use the fast mode? Well, I will answer that, but first let's see the datasheet for this EEPROM. These are the I2C characteristics, and you can see, this ROM supports 400 kHz rate, and even 1000 kHz. Since it can support these high speed transfers, I chose the fast mode. That's all the setup we need here. Now let's set up the clock. I have 8 MHz external crystal, and I want the system to run at 180 MHz. Click save to generate the project. This is our main file. First of all, let's copy the library files in our project. You can get these files from the link in the description. Put the source file in the source folder, and header file in the include folder. Let's take a look at the eprom.c file. Here you need to define the I2C that you are using. Next define the address of the eprom. You need to define the 8-bit address, that includes the read and write bit also. To know the address, you can check the datasheet for your device. As you can see here, the higher bits of the address are fixed, 1010. The lower bits can be modified by modifying the A2, A1, and A0 pins. I have connected the all three of them to the ground, so all three are zero. Also the read or write bit should be kept as zero for the write operation. It will be automatically modified by the HAL functions during the read operations. This makes up the address for my device as 0 cross A0. Next we need to define the page size, and the number of pages. As you can see this EEPROM have 512 pages, and each page is 64 bytes in size. Actually the memory in a ROM is generally divided into pages, and each page have some size in bytes. As I said in the beginning, that I am trying to write the most generalized code here, so that it can be used with other EEPROMs too. For that purpose, you have to input these values according to your ROM. This is all about the defines. We will talk about this function in a while, but first let's talk about write function. Obviously this function is used to write data to the respective location in the ROM. This function takes the following arguments. The page where you want to start the write from. Any offset inside the page. The data that you want to write, and the size of the data. Before we jump inside this function, let's understand the memory locations. As you can see here, the memory address is divided into two bytes.
The first six bits are responsible for the byte address. This byte address can vary between 0 to 63. And from bit 6 to bit 14 are responsible for the page address. This can vary between 0 to 511. This way, a page have the 64 bytes space in it, which can be controlled separately for each page. Now when we continuously write data to this ROM, the byte address gets incremented automatically, but this is not the case with the page address. Because of this, in one write cycle, we can only write data to a single page. If you try to write data, which is more than the page size, the data will roll over to the beginning of the same page. To handle this situation, we have to manually increment the page address, and that can be done by modifying bits 6 to 14. I will demonstrate all these situations, but first let's go through the write function. First of all we are going to find out the bit number, where the page address starts. Here 2 to the power x will be the page size. You do the rest of the math. In my case, this bit will be bit 6. Next we set the start page and the end page for the data. Here end page also depends on the offset that you use. For example, if you use the start page as 1, and an offset of 50, and then write 20 bytes. In that case, the end page will be page 2, since you are going outside the boundary of page 1. Then we calculate the number of pages that we are going to write. Now until the required number of pages has been written, this loop will continue repeating. Inside this loop, first thing we do is calculate the address of the memory location. To do so, we will shift the start page by the address position bit, that we calculated earlier. For example, if my start page is 2, it will shift the 2 by 6 bits, and that makes the A6 as 0, and A7 as 1. In case the start page is 4, this 4 will be shifted by 6 places, making the bit A8 as 1. Similarly if I shift 511 by 6 places, all these bits will be 1, making the page address as 511. We add this page address with the offset value, thus controlling the byte address also. Next we calculate the remaining bytes using this function. The arguments are the size of the data, and the offset. Let's see this function. If the size plus offset are still less than the page size, it will return the size itself. For example, if the size is 20 bytes, and offset is 30. This adds up to 50, which is still less than 64. In this case, the number of bytes to write will be the size itself, that is 20 bytes. But if the size and offset are greater than the page size, then the remaining bytes will be page size minus offset. Say size is 30 bytes, and offset is 40. This adds up higher than 64. Since we are starting at 40th position, we can only write 24 more bytes to the current page. That's why this is 64 minus 40, giving us 24 bytes to write, in a single operation. The rest of the bytes will be written in next write cycle. Now we will write the data to the device using harl2c mem write function. The arguments are the i2c handle, the device address, the memory address, size of the memory address, which is 2 bytes, as we have 15 bit address. The data to be written, this position parameter here defines the start position in the data, as we need to update the location in the data also size of the data, which is the remaining bytes, and timeout. Now we will increment the start page, and set the offset to zero, since we will be starting from the beginning in the new page. Update the size, and the position in the data buffer also.
after performing the rite to the memory, we must give some delay. The reason is mentioned here. EEPROM will program the data into the non-volatile memory, and it needs some time to do that. This time is defined here, as you can see it's 5 milliseconds, and that explains the delay. This completes the write function. The read function is exactly the same. We perform all those operations, except here we read the data instead of write. Since we are reading this time, the delay has been removed here. You need to pass the address of the buffer, where you want to save the data to. Page erase function can be used to erase a single page in the ROM. The argument is the page number that you want to erase. Here we first find the memory location using the page number. Now create a buffer, equal to the page size. Copy the data into the buffer. You can use some other data also. Now we will write this data to the given location in the ROM. Since it's a write cycle, we will give 5 milliseconds delay. If you want to erase the entire ROM, call this function in A for loop. This is it for the explanation of this file. Now let's write our program. Let's include the eprom.h file here. Let's erase the entire ROM first. I have 512 pages, and therefore I am calling the page erase function 512 times. Before going any further, let's create a variable that can store the data that we are going to read. Let's read the data from the memory now. We will use harli 2 c mem read to read the data from the memory. The arguments are the i2c, address of the ROM. Address of the memory block, here I am reading the third page. I have already covered the significance of shifting this by 6 here. Memory address size is 2 bytes. Where we want to store the data. The data size will be the page size, that is 64 bytes. And the timeout. Let's build it. Everything is good, let's debug our code. Let's add the data read to the watch expression. I am adding a breakpoint here. It hit the breakpoint. Let's step it over. You can see the data in the read buffer. It's the decimal value for 0 cross 0 f. And the data received is 64 bytes. Now let's try to write some data to the memory location. Before that, we will comment this out. harli 2 c mem write will be used to write the data. I am choosing the page 3 again. Let's create an array to store the data that we are going to write. Here we will store some data to that array. I am storing the ASCII characters, starting from 10. We will write 64 bytes again. Here we need to give 5 milliseconds delay, for the write cycle. Let's debug this and see.
you can see the data is starting from 0 cross A, which is hex for 10. And the 64th byte is 0 cross 49. Now let's see what happens when we try to write more than the page size. According to the datasheet, the data will start overlapping from the beginning of the same page. As expected, the first byte is not 0 cross A, because it's been overlapped by the 64th byte. And this overlapping is up to the 5th byte. 63rd byte is still the same one, since it hasn't been overlapped. You saw the issues, that I talked about in the beginning, that the page address doesn't increment on its own. And to handle this situation, I wrote those functions. Let's test those functions too. EPROM write will take the following arguments. The start page, any offset in that page. The data, and the size of the data, here also I am going to write 70 bytes. EPROM read also takes the same arguments. Let's build and debug our program now. Here you can see, the first byte is 0 cross A, and the data continues for more than 64 bytes. That means the page got incremented this time, and these last 6 bytes are from page 4. This means the functions are working as expected. Everything is handled by these write and read functions. Now let's try to write some string, like I was waiting for this part. This is long enough to cross the boundary of a page. Change the data, and its size. Seems like I forgot to include the string header. Here I will try to read 100 bytes. Let's debug it now. Here you can see the string. So the string was successfully written to the ROM, and that too in two different pages. It's not complete because I am only reading 100 bytes. Let's make some more changes. I will make it 128 bytes. And this time let's give an offset of 10 bytes. Note here that I am not keeping any offset in the read function. So the read will anyway happen from the beginning of the page. You can see here the first 10 bytes are not written. And then we have data from the 11th position. 
This string continues, and we are receiving this data from two different pages. And seems like we are short on buffer again. Anyway you can just increase the read buffer size to avoid this. This is it for this video. I hope things were clear, and you understood the logic properly. This code is somewhat generalized for the I2C EEPROMs, with 16 bytes of memory address. If you have any other variant, leave the comment below, I will try writing another version of it. That's all for now. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.